Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you very much for joining me. This is uh, the DAX Open. My name is Russell Shaw, Senior Market Specialist at FXM. And my email address is rshaw.fxm.com. Today is um, Tuesday, the 28th of December. Very quiet week in the market. And uh, yeah, just going to bring up our um, high risk investment morning. I hope um, everyone had a terrific. Uh, long weekend and festivities and um, I think that um, we all know that between sort of Christmas and New Year the, the liquidity is going to be um, extreme, uh, extremely thin. Um, let's just bring up our market commentaries disclaimer. And just our references, um, FXM Market Scope 2.0 and CNBC. We'll just go through the CNBC uh, morning article uh, very quickly. And um, well, let's just take a look at the headline. Um, European, European markets head for positive open amid holiday thin trade, which is exactly um, what we've said. Um, European stocks are expected to open higher uh, as holiday thin trade continues. Uh, European markets were um, slightly higher in holiday thin trading session on Monday, with many markets still closed due to the Christmas festivities. Uh, markets in the UK and Ireland remain closed on Tuesday. U.S. markets reopened on Monday after the Christmas holiday with indexes seeing positive moment momentum. The S&P 500 gained 1.4% uh, roughly, making it the 69th record close of the year. The index also hit an intraday record for the first time in more than a month. Investors are looking for a Santa Claus rally to close out the year. And um, this year, just a reading, this year has returned more than 27%, which is astounding. Uh, the benchmark index historically gains during the Santa Claus rally, the final five trading days of the current year and the first two of the um, new year, that period began, began on Monday. I just want to stress cautiousness with this type of uh, reporting. Um, you know, there might be some sort of um, anomaly attached to the Santa Claus rally, uh, but you know, don't uh, don't bet that it happens 100% of the time. It certainly doesn't. Um, so, still do the analysis that you always do, um, and um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, market players have spent uh, recent weeks juggling concerns over new COVID restrictions and tighter central bank policy, with early studies suggesting Omicron strain is milder than Delta. New studies in South Africa and the UK last week suggested Omicron has a reduced risk of hospitalization and severe illness. In the UK, at the end of last week, infections were still topping 100,000, but France had also reported, has also reported cases above that figure for the first time. Um, data releases in Europe include Spanish retail sales for November. All right, um, let's just have a, a look at the at the DAX. Let's take a look at the uh, the weekly chart. We'll work our way downwards and. Um, Let's go to this one. Just uh, I want to I want to stay away from the indicators for now because they they're in flux. We don't. Um, I think the I think the price action is sort of um, quite important at the moment. So we've got the um, peak. A bit We've got the reference trough. We've got the reference peak over here. Uh, this is now HT question mark. In other words, we're looking for the next higher trough. Uh, let's just um, show what I'm looking for here. And I'll change the color just to make it easier to see. So we've got this 
uh, trough to peak. Uh, the higher trough, and now uh, we're looking for the next higher peak, which is of course the definition of a of the uptrend. Um, I'm not going to take the question mark um, away from the HT yet. Um, I think it depends on um, how we close this week. In other words, um, I'd like the close to be above last week's high. Now then we'll take the um, the question mark. Um, out and then we'll start looking for the uh, for the swing. Now, truth be told, um, I guess we could actually call this HP. I'll put in a question mark here as well because it has taken out the reference here. But uh, what I'm cautious about is um, just how we close. If we close below this upper horizontal, um, then of course. It's probably not a bullish candlestick, uh, probably more bearish, right? So at the moment, uh, we don't have the HT uh, confirmed, although I'll, le I'll leave the labeling, I'll leave the, uh, the labeling as, as this. Um, we'll go down to the um, daily chart, and of course, um, this is uh, looking um, really good. Um, we've moved all the way from zone three uh, into zone one, so we, we're tracking in the in the bullish area. And um, I like the fact that the um, Bollinger bands, the outer ones, the red Bollingers, are starting to track uh, in that northeasterly direction. See, there's the slope of the Bollinger, and this Bollinger's moving. So that's, I think, another bullish development. The obvious. Uh, caveat here, yeah, the, obvious, the obvious caution is how much um, confidence can we have in the, um, the charts this week, considering that it's um, you know, a very thinly traded week? And I think that's a very pertinent, very relevant question. And I would suggest that um, there's a higher uh, chance that the, the bar, the, the candles, um, of themselves are less stable um, than in a, a, a normal um, a normal week with normal liquidity. Ne nevertheless, okay, let's just put that aside. Um, uh, liquidity notwithstanding, and it is a concern. Uh, this is a, a nice looking chart, um, and we've got some red. We've got some red as the day starts. Um, why do I make a point of that? It's because we're looking for a dip, aren't we? We're looking for the dip. So um, let's just go back to the weekly chart. So we've got the higher trough, higher peak in question marks, but for the for the time being, they they there. Um, go down to the the daily. We're in zone one. All right. So just to reiterate, liquidity uh, concerns notwithstanding, this looks. Uh, pretty good on any other week during the year. I think we would have uh, been quite um, excited to see this. So given that, if we go down to the hourly chart, um, what we want to see here is the um, the hourly chart now um, sync up with the higher time frame. So um, we've got the dip over here. So let's just put in the one two yeah this we're looking to see if this is a two three now we don't know if it's a two three um but if it is okay then we would want to get in on the next leg up so how do we how do we decide if this is a two three correction how do we decide um, if it has completed well we look at our triggers and the triggers um, would be the EMA would need to uh, move in that northeasterly direction and show some angle and separation. And the stochastic would have to cross positively and move above 80. Now, uh, when those uh, signals take place, we'll, it will probably, probably be late. In other words, the 2 3 correction has already concluded. We now probably into the the start of the next impulse up. 
but that's okay in my opinion because um, it really will pay off if the momentum sticks okay so um, this is the important part here not the not the um, the fear of missing out um, so um, somebody um, once asked me but if we wait for the signals aren't we going to be late and the answer to that is yes you'll be late but the two three correction is over um, but um, you can't get all of the impulse move it's um, it's impossible on a timing system unless you're extremely lucky but you can get the majority of the impulse move and if you get the majority of the impulse move, well, that is a 10 out of 10 trade. So you've got to be happy with the fact that you won't get in at the bottom. You've got to be happy with the fact that you won't get out at the top, but you'll take the majority of the move and that's a 10 out of 10. So that, that's, that's, the, that's the goal. It's not to get in at the bottom. It's not to get out at the top. It's to take the majority of the impulse. So um, the idea here is we just need to um, decide if this is, um, the end of the two, three correction. If we don't get our signals, well, then it's just going to drop through to S1 and the, uh, the signals or the triggers haven't been pulled. Um, the big deal for us is even if the signals, even if the triggers um, are pulled, uh, it really comes down to the underlying momentum. So let's just say we do get um, positive uh, triggers. Um, well, if we move into the 80 and drop out almost immediately, that's no good. Okay, that, that means that the impulse move is not really uh, cooperating with us. But if it heads into the 80 area and holds, well, then I think there's something uh, that's potentially on there. And that would be lining up with the um, daily zone one. It would be lining up with this, um, sorry, I'm just going to this chart, it would be lining up with this higher trough, higher peak. Uh, but uh, I guess I just want to remind you, thin trade, thin trade, thin trade, and uh, that may have some sort of um, bearing. All right. Um, any questions around that? Please go ahead and um, type this through. Okay, nothing coming through, so I'll just uh, download this and then I'm going to upload it onto our insights page. Um, so if anybody wants to uh, rewatch it, uh, it will be on insights. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. I appreciate it. Have a great day, great week. Have a, a very good um, holiday season as a whole. And uh, we'll chat again soon. Thanks very much, guys.